I want to check with you guys uh, if you have everything that, that you need for the meeting. Uh, have you had your, your towel, rich towel at hand? And uh, have you have your water? And if you have uh, your your bucket for spitting or puking, puke bucket. And if you have a, a notebook and a pen for writing, anything that comes up. Can you hear us now, Stephanie? I think Stephanie's having some sound issues. Yeah, you can hear us? Okay, okay. I apologize for being late and I apologize for my disturbance. No problem, we're just getting started. We were waiting for the other people to come and I haven't heard from them. So this is it, this is us. And I let you in because you, you clearly said that the, there was uh, that you were joining. I was just checking with everyone if you have your your towel, if you have your 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 bucket, your water, and your notebook. <clears throat> We're gonna need definitely gonna need most of these things today. Now I'm gonna wait for Stephanie to to come back. Great. Okay. It's great if you want to drink some water now while while we're starting. That's a great time. And I'm gonna invite you to take a deep breath into your whole body. Take a deep breath into your whole body. Um, we're gonna do a little ex exercise of centering into our experience, into our body. So you just take a deep breath. And I'm gonna be saying some things right now for centering. There is two types of center. There is your physical center of your physical body, which is your point of balance, which is located just underneath your belly button, two or three fingers below your belly button, in between your hips, there is a, a ball about the size of an orange. That is the, your physical center. And it's your point of balance of your body, your body's balances point. And there is another, another center, which is your energetic center, which is mobile. This center, it moves. It can move to the past. It can move to the future. It can move to different parts of our body, like our head, like our, our legs. It can move to ideas, to thoughts, to projects. It's this energetic center. It can move even to people, to situations, to dreams, and to other different spaces. So use your intention to locate where, where your energetic center is in this moment. Locate it if it's in the past, if it's in the future, if it's somewhere else that is not here. Go and find it and locate it with your intention. And Little by little, start noticing where it is. Start putting a notice. Oh yeah, it was over there in, in that thing that I didn't do yesterday. Or it was in that dream that I had last night. Or it is in this project that I'm working on. Or it is in, a, in an argument that I had with my partner yesterday. And little by little, start noticing and bringing it to here, to now and start making a ball in front of you, of your energetic center. Start calling in your energetic center to come here to this present moment where you can use it. Here and now is the only time where you can use it. 
So start bringing that energetic center to in front of you and in the form of a ball. And when it's there, when it's there, start bringing it down to your physical center. So you're going to be bringing your energetic center to your physical center in the middle of your body, underneath the belly button, in between your hips. And let it land there. Let the sensation, this is a sensation, this is not a concept or a theory. This is really a, an experience of being centered. When your energetic center aligns with your physical center, this is an experience. You are here, more of you is here. You have more of your presence, of your attention is here. So let that energetic center land in your body. And this will be your sensation, your experience of being centered. And when you're ready there, use your clicker, like snapping of your fingers, to declare a grounding core from your center, the center of your physical body and your energetic center, down to the center of Mother Earth, down to the center of Gaia. This is your connection with Gaia. And it's a two-way cord, about this thick, about five centimeter diameter thick. And it's flexible. It can move. It's a flexible cord. And it has a two-way communication. So you receive information and energy from Gaia. And you also send energy and information to Gaia. You're in constant communication. And you can declare this consciously with your snapping of your fingers to visualize, see it, and create it with your intention. And this cord, it has a color. And it can be a, a color that doesn't really have a name. It can be a strange, strange color and a different color. So you say it into the space. You don't have to unmute. You say it into the space what the color of your grounding cord is at the count of three. One, two, three. My grounding core is still Water blue. Green. <clears throat> Changing colors. This is your experience of being grounded. Now you are grounded to the earth. You are grounded to Gaia. This place is the place that's supporting your feet. And this is a reminder to also to take off your shoes. If you haven't already, to put your feet on the earth. And next, you're going to use your clicker again of your snapping of your fingers to create a bubble of space around you. This is a bubble of space that engloves you and is your, your space, your individuality, your, your feelings, your thoughts, your emotions is all in here. Everything that is in your bubble of space is your essence. And everything that is outside of that is everything else, is the, the rest of the world. And your bubble of space is your connection with the world, how you interact with the world in a way that you have clarity about what is yours and what is the, the rest of the world. And you can use your hands to detect the how far away this, this bubble of space is. Use your hands to feel that bubble of space and even to, to give you love and say thank you to this bubble of space. Because this bubble of space is protecting you and it's your your energy, it's your your world. And this is the sensation, this experience is the sens your sensation of being in your bubble of space, in your energetic center, grounded in your bubble of space. I'm going to use my clicker one more time to create a golden cube of space for this work that we're going to do here today called the Sounds of Rage. 
and inside of this golden cube, this golden cube has a thick grounding core to the center of Gaia. It's about this thick. Uh, and it's a black grounding core that is grounding this space to take on any emotions, any excess of emotions and feelings to that it can go to Gaia. And the golden cube is for us to be here with our bright principles, with our connection, our intention and purpose of connection, our purpose of transformation, of bringing clarity, of bringing healing, of bringing love into the world and into this space that is happening here right now. And if there is any any principles or any foundations that you want to bring into the space, you can speak them out loud now into the space. Love and support. Thank you. Focus. Thank you. So now we're here. Welcome to the Sounds of Rage. Um, one moment. Welcome to the Sounds of Rage. We're going to be doing today some really amazing stuff with exper experiments that are going to be about getting the how it feels for you inside and how it sounds for you we're going to be working a lot with sounds about uh, rage and what is the rage like uh, or the anger this energy of anger and, uh, we're going to be doing some experiments about that with our towel and with sounds with our face and I want to share a bit about my journey with with rage and how I and how it ended up here, how I how I am here. For me, anger, about a year ago or so, it was something that I was completely foreign to. I I knew about it, but it was this thing that was wrong to do. There was something that. I, I didn't, I didn't really, I wasn't familiar with this energy. There was something that was like very internalized about this and that it wasn't on the surface. Uh, it will show up in when, when you, when you got to like really high levels in the past, like, like when it just comes up and I, I have no other choice but to like, like fucking explode and just go on about this bomb, which for me, it will happen very rarely in the past, like. Like I can count with my hands the times that it happened, something like that. So my, my anger was like very internalized before and very in a, in a way that it was suppressed. It, it will come up like now I see it as a, this form of resentment, this forms of like hating myself and hating, hating the world. And, and a, a year ago I started. I started going deeper into that. I started going deeper into the, this, like practice. So what is my rage? And like, I, I read this website called the 333 initiation. And it was an initiation that, that I, I that is done f uh, for three months, for the duration of three months. You do it three times a week, three minutes. You go on like full expression of your anger, full expression of your rage, like, all on like ah with your face your muscles your fist your your legs every every part of your body you go lay down in your bed and you start like banging uh, and like like the idea is to like go for three minutes from the beginning to the end full on like going going on this so i did this for for these three months uh and and it was this it was like a like it was this vision of, of going into like taking back what what I had given away. I had given away something and I I didn't have access to my clarity. I didn't have access to to my my own being. I uh, I didn't 
I was in the mock, like in the mock, and like I didn't know what was me and what was my partner, and what was me and what was my my, my the people around me. In a way, like I I was like blending in with with the world, and I didn't know anymore what was me. I didn't know what I wanted, and when I when I started doing this practice of the the three months. It, it brought off something in me from the first time. Like I could feel in my body that was tingling. It was like, I never done this before. I never done anything like this before. And it felt amazing. And I went again and again and again, uh, three times a week, only three minutes. All you need is that all I needed was those three minutes. And my, like after one month, my life started like really taking on big changes. Like I could feel this rise of this energy that was very uncomfortable and different to what I knew. And and uh, I was sharing with my partner at that time. I was like, I just feel angry or like I feel like all this like big energy or, and I, I don't know what to do with it because I never felt it before. And... It wasn't until she, she started doing it that, that she got it too. It's like, I feel angry and I never felt like this before. So, uh, yeah, that, that was a pretty big initiation into like my, into my rage and into that energy of my anger. After one month of doing it, I, I stopped smoking, which I had been smoking for the last nine, well, 15 years of my life. I stopped smoking cigarettes and, and cannabis. And, and I started like, there was just this new tool that I had for, for accessing this energy uh, inside of myself. And it, it's not pretty. It didn't look pretty. It's not something that is nice. It's not something that is, it was more comfortable. Even uh, it's not, it didn't make my life easier. So in that sense, like it, it, in a way it made it more more alive more intense like i had now i had this clarity i could see what i was seeing and notice what i was noticing and i couldn't repress it anymore it wasn't like something hidden it was like like out there and he was saying like okay like you have this now what, what do you want to do with it so it creates like this like this new challenge in my life like okay here is what you want now what are you gonna do about it um So in the, the duration of this year, I, I did like, I went to a rage club uh, about a few months ago together with a sadness club. So it was like kind of in parallel. And that, that was like the next step where I was, I did this rage work with, with other people. And, and it took it to the next level because I, I could use my anger with other people. And it wasn't something that I was like uh, hiding because uh, I, I still feel like there is a fear about using my anger. I feel scared of using my anger. That's one of the biggest one for me. And I, I uh, and doing this work with other teams, it really like has loosened that, loosened that up. And right now I'm doing a training that is called the Rage Club Space Holder Training, which is like uh, four, f five, five weeks, once a week, meeting with a bigger team and preparing for like doing more of this work like like bringing this work to other people and like help like working with other people to uh experiment my own rage like like work with my own rage continue my work and continue bringing my clarity to 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 people and to to my friends to my circles and also to to train to train them to train you guys to to be the, the next generation of, of that you're gonna be reclaiming that that energy of your anger for yourself and with that say i want to pass pass it pass the ball to you guys and and ask you uh that if you can say your name where are you calling from and what brings you here why are you here and Janelle, will you start? Hi, I'm Janelle, and I'm from Fenland Falls, Ontario, Canada. 
And I, what brought me here was the idea of reclaiming anger and using it as an energy um, to get what we want and where we want because um, I feel like I, I can relate to that, the power of it and, and how it can be used. Um, and I can also relate to the, the, what happens when we lose it. Like I can consciously realize the, the steps, the things that happened for me to lose my anger as a power and um, suppress it. And then the sadness that goes on top of it that um, has caused a lot of um, like suffering. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that about your, your sadness, that there is a sadness that goes on, on top of the anger. Can you say a bit more about that, like what happens? Um, so when I, I would say the first thing that happens is feeling uh, sh ashamed of anger whenever it's expressed, whether it's because it's not understood or because it's because I'm I'm acknowledging that um, when I'm using my anger to get what I want or um, make choices, I, I am possibly hurting someone else or inconveniencing someone else, uh, mm -hmm. becoming aware of that. And I'm still learning about that. Uh, like how to, a balance between boundaries and being selfish mm -hmm. like healthy boundaries and selfishness and um not beating myself up over it or hating myself there's some there's somewhere in the middle that i need to be and i can't i i'm trying to find it mm -hmm. thank you so sadness sadness comes from being in that place of of um being confused and suppressing anger because it hurts or it pushes people away. Um, yeah, anger pushes people away and it hurts people and can get people in trouble too. So instead of expressing anger, I suppress it and then sadness goes on top of it. Yeah, thank you. I want to say something that, is that, that that we live in a world where where feeling ha, has been has become something that is unwanted. Something is some feeling is something inconvenient for for the world. Feeling is is it, it's like it, it's too much. Like I like the, the the feedback that I that I was that, that is generally given is like it's too much. Your feelings are too much. If you're crying, it's too much. If you're screaming, it's too much. Uh, so we, so we go, we like born into this world where, you know, our, for some reason it's not okay to use our feelings. And, and there is this thing that if you make somebody feel, then they are, it's like, they interpret this as like, uh, you're hurting me. For example, if I use my anger to say like, no, I don't want it like that way. Like that doesn't work for me. Then if that that person feels something and then they can say like oh that that hurt me mm. and it, when in reality is like that you're making them feel something they are feeling something and that distinction I, is new for me because I, I was like scared of using my anger because i will hurt somebody else's feeling but in reality like i was scared of making that other person feel something and of their reaction of them feeling something in 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 return to me so there is that like this space is a space for feeling like like for really feeling like i'm i'm talking about the sounds of rage and the other spaces that I, that i'm holding space for that this is a space for feeling and 
and that you can that you can like bring it up and like say I feel angry, sad, scared, or 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 joy, uh, or glad. So you can like can use you can use these these terms to to bring up like what, how are you feeling and what's happening. And and we navigate through that to to creating more more and more distinctions that that create a space where we can feel and that we can use our feelings to empower our our presence here to empower our creation to empower our our walking towards presence. Uh, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So I, that distinction and that I wanted to learn is like about the the hurt. Like, making somebody feel something is not hurting them it's like that they're feeling something and um the training for me that is is being come about how do i hold space for their feelings where if i say that i'm angry for them doing something how do i say uh, how do i hold space for their fear or for their their anger back towards me or for their sadness cool thank you anything else about that um, I I think I am coming to the realization that it, uh, all feeling feeling worried to hurt somebody from not expressing our feelings, like our intentions is to not hurt somebody, but we're also hurting by not feeling our feelings and expressing our feelings because being human we hurt and i'm realizing this we're hurting from not feeling connected and feeling the anger like actually feeling it so that we can feel alive and maybe that's where a lot like that adds to the sadness um so you're either going to feel something and hurt because you're suppressing your anger or you're going to feel emotions and hurt from expressing them mm. either way. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes total sense. Yeah, it's inevitable just to feel it. Mm -hmm. yeah, Thank you. Way. You're welcome. Stephanie, will you go next? Yes. I am Steffi. And it was last winter, December, January, that I was first offered the 333 practice by Melissa and immediately said no. And there was so much fear around it and so much discomfort. And I couldn't go into it. And I blocked it. And then it was this past August that I, I was really in sadness and I sat and did a write-in and the word that continuously came up in this write-in was rage. And I knew I had to go into it and it, it wasn't the 333 practice, but it, it was my own practice based off of this, of going into feeling it that that I went into and it was three days with increased intensity and, and painting afterwards. And this was such a transformative experience for me. And, and, and what was pulled from it was the idea that my anger is my protector. This was my first distinction and that I, I haven't had this. And it was so bad that my back broke I was unable to move for days. My lower back, I, I, I physically could not move. And I remember one morning sitting on a yoga ball and really connecting with this pain. And it was my anger. And actually she, she was that voice that was always there. And she was coming to me and saying, man, you, you heard me. And this is how much it hurts when you swallow me down. This is how much it hurts. And from that moment, <laughs> I've been about it. From that moment, uh, I've been wanting to gain more and more access with it and doing more experiments with it. And today I know so much more about my anger. And yeah, one of the newest distinctions is I recognize that I'm very comfortable in high intensity angers. And actually the feedback I get even around conscious people where I'm going into this is that 
I'm scary. And, and so, yeah, this supports the idea that people get scared of me and they disconnect from me. And I don't know how to be in low intensity anger. I, I, I just explode. Um, and so right now I'm playing a lot with being in those more low intensity. And a lot of it that pulled me to this specific worktop is the idea of the sound. And yeah, I know that yeah, reclaiming my voice has been a huge process in its own. And even now in my anger, just to explore the sounds of it more, it, for me, it's often a grunt. Yeah, or like this loud scream and, and just exploring more of the different ways to help move it out because it's still, yeah, sometimes it's still feeling like it's stuck. Um, and so I'm on a mission to reclaim this power. And as I've been doing this work, it's, it's been transformative. And yeah, I'm just really about it. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. What would you say is that your, your biggest need for being here where are you at? Where is that edge that you're wanting to? Where is the edge that you're at with your anger? And I, and I heard you said uh, this that that you can like either express it as a grunt, or that that it goes into like this high intensity, like big big loud sounds. And is there like it was? Did I sense that there was something in the middle that that was kind of like missing? Yes. Yeah. One of my new distinctions that came out two days ago is that actually like between like 20 and, and maybe what I imagine to be 50, 60 percent, mm -hmm. I've never been there. And even in my conscious trying to be there, uh, I, I, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how to be there. And I find myself having so trying so hard to keep it low, keep it low. And as soon as I get to the spot where I, I want to make a sound, it, it jumps and and it's so my edge right now is trying to play or experience and feel what it is to be in this 20 to 60 percent. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for for coming here and showing up and doing this work with your rage it it really is like for like it's bigger than it's bigger than each one of in the individual each one of us like i find that the the work that i'm doing on my own self is leaking out it's like going out to to the others to my circle and it's like inspiring others around and it is um feeding feeding the world so this is like is really like each one of us are like are gonna be bringing out this energy to to the outer world to our families to our communities to our circle of friends and in one way or another they can feel this energy of clarity and energy of whoa something something is different something feels different what's happening with you what are you doing so uh, i appreciate you guys for being here Sierra, will you, will you go next? Yes, I'll go. I am here from the prairies or plains of Saskatchewan. Um, it's been an interesting journey. I think it's been two months about that I have been here um, working consciously with anger and rage. I was initially introduced through a work talk that uh, was actually um, brought forth by you, Jorge, and it was a throat singing experience. And so I signed on and met with uh, you, Jorge, and it just opened this whole other world of um, emotional healing and um, 
yeah, reclaiming like sovereignty and reclaiming um, uh, like radical responsibility with um, choosing this life and choosing knowing that I have this power and being able to um, use this anger and feel this anger instead of like stuffing it or yeah like swallowing it down into a painful place which creates like it was it was yeah it creates like a mixture and a block to my heart and to my being and it just creates confusion and working with this anger has created clarity and gives me the freedom of choice um, and I There's a lot of good things said that I relate with. Um, it, yeah, the sovereign being for sure, like uh, instead of mixing with everyone's emotion, being able to have um, my my bubble and working from those places and being able to be in my anger and witness other people's anger without that judging them and being more like, okay, where is this coming from? And, also knowing like or not where is this coming from but like yeah maybe not judging other people when they have their anger and looking at it from a more experimental um point of view uh, and yeah that's all i have to share right there for that. thank you yeah, you, you mentioned this uh, this keyword of uh, emotional healing. That this has been like a doorway into emotional healing, and and I think you, you Stephanie, you also mentioned this that this calling towards the sound, the sounds like about making the sounds, uh, and it's it's actually very con very connected. There, there is a connection between the the sounds that we are that we are making and our healing. For example, when, when we were a child, when we were kids, we were small, we were little, and our parents, they, they had a big voice. Did, did, you guys, did, you, did your parents shout at you when, when you guys were, were kids? Were you, were you shouted at? So our parents had this like big, huge voice and they're like projected onto us and they send it towards us. And because we're so little, we don't have that, that capacity to to say anything about it or to, to do anything about it. So it, it, like we, we get like, st like stuck in our, in our growth, like our growing emotionally, you know, emotional growth gets stunt uh, uh, by this big voice from our parents. And, and anytime this happens to us in the, in the, in the future with, with other, other people, when we have another, another person like shouting at us with that level, then automatically like we go into this place of being a child again and being a uh yeah like like oh there is that big voice again there is a big voice again and and i and i have to play small i have to like be small i have to be uh, a child again or we go into different different strategies of whatever happened for us so part of the healing is it reclaiming your voice is making that sound that that you weren't able to make when you were a child and as soon as your ears are able your ears hear that sound that you make it's like something happens there is like a healing that happens like whoa like that was my voice i did it i did that sound that i i, I couldn't make for this whole time or i i made that sound that that can match energetically that that energy that our parents or or another uh, external authority uh, created on us when when we were younger. So, but like this is the the importance of making the sound and hearing yourself making that sound, and also having a, a space holder there. It, it it's great help. Like having somebody listening to you and listening to your process and completing completing the communication. So, so in a way that our, our emotional growth got stunned 
when we were kids by these big voices. So now as adults, we get this new chance to use our energy and, and our feelings to create that sound, to make that sound again, to so that we can like escape that that prison, so that the loop can be completed, so that the 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 healing can the emotion can be completed, so that we can finally hear like okay, I I'm able to make that sound, and I I'm able to to be in this sound and still be okay, like I'm okay, and this is big part of the emotional healing processes is that like uh, getting that that completion so that you reclaim your authority you're no longer like uh you're you're no longer uh like a slave or uh, something lesser than or you're not giving away your your authority to to some something else you're reclaiming that authority because you're now the adult you have grown and you have grown your capacity to make sounds and to understand things to create distinctions to to feel things in a different way uh to yeah to to take the reins of your life to take the reins of your life to to create the things that you wanted to create because the things that you came here to create are very unique to you e each one of you like have like something very unique that you came here to create and and you need the, that recla reclaiming of your energy so that you can like have clarity about what that is and that you have the energy to say, this is what I want. I want to create this into the world. And and yeah, part of the, the healing process is doing that, reclaiming little by little more like, oh, there's this experience, there is that experience. And, the, and there is a purpose too for doing it like, for example, the the three 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 initiation, you do it for no reason. You go to high level intensity anger for no reason. It doesn't have to have a story. Oh, it's like my partner pissed me off yesterday, so I'm gonna fucking rage about it today. It's not like that. It's like you go into the three minutes for no reason, and and is is when you go there. To that place for no reason is that you start discovering this thing like oh this happened to me when i was a child or oh this thing i remember like this thing that happened to me when i was a teenager or or like this like thing oh i remember this thing that happened last year that i, I didn't even acknowledge or something like that so it's by going into those like high intensity for no reason that you get to to get the information from it but if you're waiting for the reason, if you're waiting for like, oh, wh what should I be raging about today or thinking about it? Like, what's my story for raging today? It, it doesn't have that that capacity for transformation. It will be more like a cathartic thing. It will be a cathartic mean, meaning like I want to release this anger. I don't want this anger. I want to get rid of this energy because it's too much or I don't want it. But in the in this work, it's more like, like I want this energy, I need this energy, and this is my fuel for my life. This is how, how I take take back my my healing, my take back my 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 process of of healing. Yeah, I'm like take back my authority, so I take back my power, so I can take back my life and clean up the messes that I'm making. Do you guys, is there any questions about this, what I'm saying so far? Mm -hmm. Have you guys, uh, have any of you guys done an emotional healing process? Um, with, with possibility management or, or outside of possibility management? Steph? Maybe okay. I okay, maybe it's Sierra. Sort of, it wasn't set into like this is an emotional healing process, but I was able to go into an emotional state and have discovery happen, like miniature, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool, thank you.
there is another thing that I want to speak about that is it's a technology that we developed when we were kids uh, and as a way to survive the world uh, where we live in, where we came in. I've, I'll speak about my, my experience in coming into this world. Uh, uh, I came through C-section into the world. So my, my mother, she got this appointment in the schedule, in the calendar to go at, at a certain day to the host to the clinic to visit the doctor and the doctor uh, he, he appointed this this date according to his calculations and according to his um his prediction on where when she was going to be ready and also his availability so my mom showed up on may 20th 1985 here in the in the at the clinic and the doctors, they put him in the room, they put her in the room, waiting, waiting, waiting. They said, okay, Betty, now you're ready to, to go to, to, we're ready for you. So they take her to, to the, to the emergency room, to the operation room. They give her some uh, anesthetics for the pain. And, and, and then they, they, open it open her up like they they put the anesthetic they open her up in her belly and the doctor pulls me out and and i'm going really fast towards it but like it, I, the doctor pulls me out and puts me in my mom's belly after wiping me off and then uh oh, my mom is carrying me and holding me it's like oh my baby i was with you for nine months and 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 then like 10 10 minutes pass like she's holding me and looking at me and with my mama for for the first time in my life outside into this world and after 10 minutes the the doctor said okay we gotta take him now my my mom she didn't know how to say no she didn't know she could say no and and she, yeah she told me about this and they, they, they took her, she, she gave him, so they took me and they put me in an incubator or in this machine for the next three hours. And it's like the, the world where we come into is it, like that. It's like, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and right, right from that moment when, when she gets a, the anesthetic, like this is a, something that, uh, like it was landed into my body. Oh, oh no she's not able to feel then when when they're i'm with her and then they take me away then this is another shock to the body so it's like automatically as a baby we go into this like emergency response of like holy shit like wh why is there so much effort for bringing a baby into the world why why is there so much like chaos and like suffering and worrying about bringing this beautiful thing about bringing a baby to the world and and right away like my 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 survival strategy starts kicking in because i i'm here and i i want to be here i came here for a reason i i come here for a reason and and I, a survival strategy start developing which is uh something called the numbness bar we which is like something that we do as, as a way to survive the the intensity of this space as a way to survive uh, the the repression of feelings so this this numbness bar is something that it, it has a percentage it has from like zero percent to a hundred percent and the, this numbness bar starts like in a way like growing and growing and growing until we we can we we can only feel like ten percent or fifteen percent, and it's like the top the top fifteen percent, for example. So everything under is like we we don't feel because it's dangerous to feel. And and this is a, a technology because it helps us survive. This is like it helps us to be here. It helps us to to be like appear like nothing is happening appear that like we're okay when underneath like there is like so much that is like stirring up and that is like 
like all the injustice that's happening in the world, the climate change, the overpopulation, the the technology madness, the, the school system, the government system, like all of this madness. And through our growing uh, growing up, like we learn to to use like cope cope with it. And this is our numbness part, that coping mechanism. And when I started doing this work, I had a really high numbness bar. I, I still have a high numbness bar. I'm still working with it. Where I, I, I sometimes like I can't feel like I feel like a like a, like callous in my heart or something that is like blocking me from connecting. And and this technology is something that that we can use to start feeling again more deeply and to start like gaining access to to lower to lower levels lower lower percentages of our feelings where there is so much information there is so much information in these lower lower levels of feelings for example in like five five percent of your anger it can it can tell you like oh i'm angry because my kitchen is messy right now uh or i'm angry because it's, it's wet outside and i uh, and it's getting wet inside here too, something like that. There is a lot of information inside of those uh, small percentage anger. And what happens when you have a a big numbness bar is like all of that information is unaccessible, and it's not until the anger gets all the way up here that you like that you start feeling it's like ah oh, fuck why am I feeling so angry? And then it comes into this e explosion. It comes into like explosive and you don't want to be around anybody else and everybody else sucks and like get out of my space because I'm fucking pissed off. So this is the, the technology of the numbness bar and it's here. I wanted to do a little experiment with that. Let's see. I'm going to check if we have time for this. Okay. Okay, does any, do you guys have any questions about this? Do you know what the num, can you feel the numbness bar that you have created for yourself? Do you have any questions about it? I don't have any questions, but I'm, I definitely think I'm aware of it when I'm, um, the first call that I did with Melissa and she asked us to be um, feeling our, our anger on a low level um, and and not not with, with no stories and just in a in a present place uh, like in a conscious place and I wasn't able to connect to anything so I'm That is what I relate to the num numbness bar. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> yeah, thank you. Anything, yeah, Sierra? I really relate with the, like the numbness, numbness feeling of like getting so, reaching like that point of like, um, like an explosion almost that it like pushes everyone out of the bubble and like mm. completely makes it like creates disconnect um yeah i think that's where my numbness bar was reading most i don't know yeah mm -hmm. yeah thank you mm. yeah it builds up it builds up and then it's all the way up here and then it like poof like comes out in this big explosion because like all the way to up here from here to here we were okay i'm 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 okay and then it gets to here it's like floop switches and ah it's like this like my like i i want to kill somebody something like that so this this experiment about the numbness part that i want to do with you is I did it with Sierra I think last week and it's about like using using your hands 
to detect where your numbness bar is in this moment. And yeah, we're gonna do this one. Yeah, we will do this one first. It's, it's about this is gonna be an experiment called lower your numbness bar. The, the purpose of this is to lower your numbness bar so that you can start feeling and tuning into like the lower intensity feelings. Are you all up for this? Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna be guiding you. You're gonna need your hands and just find a, like a place in between like the top of your screen where I can see you and then this will be the, the bottom of the screen. This will be like 0% down here and this will be 100% up here, right? And take a deep breath and remember, use your clicker again to, to center yourself and ground yourself and create your bubble of space and start using your hands, your energetic hands to sense into where your numbness bar is. If it's if it's a high numbness bar, like a hundred percent numbness bar, is so you can feel nothing. If it's ninety percent, then you can feel ten percent, that top part. If it's fifty percent, then you can feel like 50% of your feelings and the rest of them are down. Just use your hands to detect where that is. And there is no right or wrong, there's, there's just different differences. And this works if it's like really honest for you where you're at. Now use your hands to feel into the, the edge of the numbness bar. Feel that edge of it. And with your fingers, use your sensitivity to feel the edge of it. And you're gonna start using your intention to push it, to start pushing it down little by little, gently, gently, gently. And you might need to use a bit of your anger for this. You might need to use your anger to to, to, to to command it to go down that you want to feel now. And there's feelings are are gonna come up as you do this. And let those feelings come. It can be sadness, it can be fear, it can be anger. Just let those feelings come without judging them, without any worries about being here, feeling them. This is a space for feeling. Bring it down, bring it down. Now this is the process of lowering your numbness bar. See if, if it stays there, if it stays down, or if it automatically goes up. Just keep checking on it. And this could be an experiment that you can do three or four times a day to check where is your numbness bar and what what is hiding, what are you what are you hiding behind your feelings, what is the feelings? And that you can do this process. Or anytime you can like do this with your hands to, to bring it down and to, to keep it down when when you're when you're in a space where you can feel. Mm. And I, I want to invite you to share your experience. 
what was happening for you when you were bringing the this the down anybody um, I was really, um at first i was kind of convinced that i wouldn't feel anything um but then i did experience um starting to feel a little bit of anger for um not um first it, it was like what i wanted and i know that it, it's connection i want more connection and um somewhere to start building and honesty and just the idea that it when i'm focusing on my conscious feelings I'm feeling angry for not having that right now. And I want it right now. I want connection. I want honesty and I want to start building. I want everything right now. And I'm angry for not having it. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I feel like a lot came up and yeah, I, I felt fear as I went to go start lower in the bar and, and I felt resistance and yeah, I, I had a, the same question come up, Janelle, of, uh, do I want to lower this bar and, and and I, I also noticed needing to use force that my, my arm, like my left arm specifically is sore. And, and also as I was moving it down and I would get it down at the entire way, it felt like there was also a bounce, like that resistance that I, I would move it down and, and then it would come back up. And, and then I would move it down and it would come back up. Um, and the whole way down, it, it did this bounce back up and down. Mm. Yeah. What was the fear about? Yeah, I'm not even so sure. You can you can do it right now. You can you can ask it right now. It might still be there. Yeah. What am I afraid of? Yeah. Why do I have fear and lower in the numbness bar? Yeah, that. That's different. Yeah, like it, it's just the unknown, and it all goes dark, and and I. Yeah, there's unknown, and even as I'm exploring it right now, like I'm feeling sadness. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fear of being in this space that I, I don't know, and just the unknown of it. What, what is the sadness about? Yeah, that I'm so numb that I'm afraid to feel in these lower states that like, that I'm so numb. No, oh, I'm sad that I'm so numb. Thank you for taking these steps to feeling more. This is valuable. What you're doing right now is valuable for, for the space, for the quality of the space where we're in and and for for the world what, what would you say is is the numbness about what is it kind of like what is it that that's hiding what is it that, that you're protecting there with the numbness What will happen if if you had no numbness bar, something like that? Yeah. It's confusing because I, I feel that there's clarity there, that there's directness there, that actually everything I want is in that space where I'm not. And I don't clearly see what I'm afraid of in it and, and what's hiding there. And 
Yeah, I feel I need to feel that question more and maybe explore that question more it is what am I afraid of in that space? Yeah, it's, it sounds like it could be a great doorway to a, one of the emotional healing processes, spaces. Something like, I'm, I'm, I feel like it's about either about your sadness or about your fear, your fear or your sadness to, to be in that space. To have that clarity. Yeah, I hear you say you, you feel sad about being numb about that, your level of numbness. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and, and maybe I can share that there's a feel, yeah, what's coming up even as I write down the question is there's a feel of responsibility, and, and it's so big in this experience from the first time I connected with my anger that actually I always made the conscious choice to hear her, acknowledge her and not express it. Yeah, and, and there's something in there that's coming up about, yeah, responsibility. Yeah, uh, of, yeah, of creating the numbness bar and not feeling and expressing it when it's there and it's lower and waiting for it to get so high. Yeah, I share just because it came up as I wrote it down. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I see it like this experiment of noticing three to four times a day where is your numbness bar and, and start using this. Like even physically use your hands to, to bring it down to, to that feeling. When it's too when it's too invisible for you that you can sense what's happening you can like do this and automatically you you start uh, kind of calibrating your hands to to allow the, the numbness part to go down and and to to feel more into what what's happening in that moment thank you thank you for going there Sierra. I felt that like I didn't feel a lot come up necessarily um, in my mind. I know that there is a lot of num like a lot of numbness that has happened and choosing to go to the space is maybe scary to feel these things and consciously feel them um, and know that they're gonna come up. It's more like a sensation in my heart of like, I don't know, it almost goes from like my heart to my throat. Like, ugh, yeah, yeah. Um, will, you, will you try this again, Sierra? Will you, will you try to do it now and while we watch you do it? And you let any any feelings that come up, just let them let them come al alive. Whatever it is, and it'll just be a space for feeling. Really, take take the time to feel it. Take the time to feel the, your heart, your feelings, everything that's coming up. I think this is what my fear is showing up as. Like this feeling. It's like a, a, a panic or of the unknown, a fear of the unknown. That yeah. makes my, like, makes my Okay, I have another request for you. Could you get a, a bit closer to the screen? Could you get a bit closer so that we can see your face a bit, a bit more? I don't. <clears throat> I can get a bit closer. That works. 
Kenna, you were saying that as you were going here, your fear started talking or your something, your fear started talking about this uh, panic, something about panic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, See, so what I'm proposing is that you, that you go through this so that, uh, and that we hold space for you. Uh, for for going into that those feelings that you want to feel those feelings that are there i'm not feeling um grounded in my space or safe in my space at this time to do that um, and that makes me feel sad um, and that's been a practice through this this whole call because my house is very busy right now and there's a lot happening so mm -hmm. it's just yeah. I just don't feel it's like that's where the numbness is. It's yeah. Like, I hear that. So don't yeah. feel like in this space to do that. And yeah. what what and yeah, like what will happen like if for example if you go into screaming, if you go screaming really loud, what what will happen? Freak like panic. What's like, happening? Yeah, like they will like like they will come in and Yeah. Okay. What's going on? There's there's not much feeling in my house. Mm -hmm. is, is it possible for you to, to, to go outside for a moment and tell them that you're gonna be doing an experiment for three minutes? Something like that? And that you might be making some loud sounds. Yeah, I can go and remind them. Will that work? Okay. <laughs> yeah, and this is this is something that. It, it, it works better when there is a one person when like if the three of us are holding space for Sierra that, that she she can like go go more into that and this is also something that you can do by yourself and you can do with, with uh, you can ask somebody to hold space for your lowering of your numbness bar so you go and somebody's holding space for you and then you can go and then you start feeling 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 and Get get into the bottom of it. Get into like what what feelings come up, and start navigating from there. There is so much information in our feelings. There's so much in there. Hey, can I ask for clarification? So the exercise is to start at this high intensity and feel that high intensity anger, and then bring it down. Is that no. no, okay. No, no, this is about the numbness bar. Right, okay. Yeah, this is like what what's blocking you like from here, like feeling nothing. Like I, I'm a robot. I'm I'm not feeling anything. I'm, I'm just a cool guy. Everything is okay. And then like study like bringing it down like little by little, little by little. Until you, you start feeling more, feeling more of your heart, feeling more of your like full body, your physical body, your emotional body, your energetic body. And your even your intellectual body and getting more getting to more and more and more access to to your feelings and to see what what's in there yeah likely you you might need your anger to to do that to to bring it down uh, and also like other feelings might come to 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 in the in that process thank you yeah thanks How did it go, Sierra? It went. I did it. Um, my, yeah, they're aware. They said, okay, they understand. Okay. Yeah, this is like part of the creating a, a space for you where you can feel and there there is so many ways i'm still learning how to create that space uh, and it's important that that for me that that I, I i'm choosing to go into that space that i 
I want to go into that space and l less and less I'm giving I'm giving more of my uh, attention to what the world the world out there is gonna think something like that um, and still like it's nice to warn your neighbors to tell them you're doing a theater practice that you're doing a play where you, there is gonna you're gonna be reenacting the battle of 1924 and you're gonna be like screaming and shouting and that for them not to worry that it's, it's just a theater practice something like that the, and there's many other stories that, that can be said i want to go into this space yeah what i hear you say is that it's choosing to go there yeah Choose. feeling very lucky in my stomach. It was very uncomfortable. Yeah, and let, let your heart speak, let your feelings speak. <laughs> this is what's <laughs> hiding all under your numbness bar. Keep noticing where your numbness varies and if it's going up or down. It just, yeah. yeah could you, I'd like that to hear. Yeah. Could you use your hands to tell us where it's at? Yeah. Yeah, I make, make the sounds. It's okay to make the big sounds here, you ask. You notice it went back up. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, and that that's that's how it goes. That that's great that you're noticing and that you 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 went down and and you're able to feel feel those feelings and notice how how it's going back up. And that that is the work now. Now you have this tool that you can like keep like even like keep going down and lower and lower and lower and. <clears throat> Now, now you have that tool. Yeah, okay, let's come to a pause now about that. Any comments or questions about this? I just want to say thank you, Sierra, for going through the ickiness and, and sharing that with us. Yeah, and it's so alive, so alive, Sierra. Mm -hmm. So valuable for for these spaces, for the aliveness of of our team, or of this call for the meaning, for for this this work to to have value. It's like you're you're bringing that value with doing doing this work. There's like this thought of it's like it's just too much yeah yeah it's too much uh okay. yeah i want to say this thing about there is a map that I, that allow me to that allow me that created this bridge from the way i used to feel to to you or what i used to think about my my feelings and what i think now about my feelings and I talked a little bit about this before, about the culture and the, the world where we came in is like, feeling is not okay. 
feelings are are bad feelings are inconvenient feelings are are unreasonable they don't make any sense and we grew up in in a world where we were educated in that way we were educated to think uh, my feelings are bad they're too much i i don't want to show my feelings because if i show my feelings then there is big consequences my parents get angry my uh, my teacher uh, grounds me uh, my friends get hurt and and so we, we like start creating this a map about our feelings that feeling angry is wrong it's dangerous it's violent it's inconvenient feeling scared is is wrong is bad because i uh because i'm a chicken i'm a coward i'm uh uh i'm like this lesser man for a man this is a big deal to feel afraid for a man is a big deal because we've been trained all the time to to feel like we're not afraid and even uh, to feel sadness for a man is is huge is 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 this big thing about like oh now you're a wussy wussy like man don't cry uh so i there was this, there is this map that gets created about uh being a, about my feelings about our feelings like it, like if you cry for example that you're a victim that you're oh then you're this victim and the you're powerless so there is all of these ideas and thoughts that get uh, connected with our feelings and this is what i call the or that we call the old thought map of feelings and it's is serious it's as serious like it's like trying to understand that is part of the work like what is it that that stops me from from feeling my anger it's like oh i feel scared of feeling my anger so then there was this transition of like what is it really a way that I can use my feelings in a way that it empowers me? Uh, how can I use my anger in a way that it empowers me? How, what is my sadness good for? This was a, like a big question for me that what is my sadness good for? I never asked my question this before. I only felt sadness when there were sad things that were happening and I, I felt sad. But I never asked myself like, what is my sadness good for? Uh, and there's this this discovery process of, of discovering the like feelings are not a design error for humans it's not a design error that we feel angry or that we feel scared or that we feel sad or that we feel joy it, and and we've been taught that it's a design error and now we're saying like what is it for if it's not a design error and like even joy like what happens if you're like expressing like 80 percent 90 percent joy out in the street just by yourself like woo! you go out there and like you're making these big sounds and and you're just like so ecstatic from being in life and you're like Whoa, hey, what's happening and people are gonna say like what drugs are you on like what are you taking oh you're like you're like not in touch with reality. Reality is, is sad. Like we're sad right now. You're like, wh what kind of reality are you on? Or you're just disconnected from reality. So even joy that we say that is the good, positive feeling, they they say that, that it's not really good. Okay, to feel joy. And I want to like go over this really quick so that we can go into some rage practice. <laughs> But uh, essentially, there is the the distinction is that there is no positive and negative feelings. Like all of these feelings, they are all of the feelings are neutral, absolutely neutral, and that the feelings carry information and they carry energy, carry energy and information. When you have this sensation coming up to you, you recognize it as fear, for example. You say, hello, fear. What do you have for me? Say, it's getting really cold. Maybe you should get a sweater. And then, okay, I get a sweater. I use that energy. So it gave me the information. It's cold. Maybe get a sweater. Okay. And then I use the energy from that to get a sweater. So it's giving me information and it's giving me energy to navigate my life. And after I do that, I cover myself 
the feeling, the sensation goes away. And then I'm open for the next one. This is what our feelings are for, for navigating. And if I'm scared of my fear, if I'm blocking and denying my fear, if I'm saying that my fear is bad, I'm going to feel the sensation of fear and I'm going to push it away. And I'm not going to get the energy from it or the information from it. So it's going to like get stuck somewhere. And um, my, my being is going to be cold, for example, or it's going to be um, lacking that thing that, that my fear was informing me about. So this is like, I don't know, very, very few people know about this. A lot of people in the world are still in the old map of feelings where feeling sad is wrong or feeling sad is, is a poor thing and you need to be rescued, you need to be helped. But like, what if you could like feel these feelings because you want to feel them, Cause, not because you're being like uh, carried by them, but like you want to like feel the, the sadness. You want to like go there because it, it feels the, the sadness is for connection. It's like the connection. I want to be connected with you. I, I want to be with you and I can use my sadness to, to connect with you. I, I want to be closer with you. I want to be doing this, these spaces in a, in a, in person thing. I want to be uh, around more people. I want my children to have more people around them. And, and I can use my sadness to touch in into this thing that is missing in, in my life and to call it forward, to get clarity about what it is, uh, without having it be like, I'm a victim of my sadness or I'm a victim of my feelings. And this is the, the transition between going from the, the old map to a new map where your feelings are actually empowering your life and empowering your, your life to, to create what you want to create. And to, it's take to overcome this idea that this, there is a design error, that your feelings are wrong or are bad or negative. Cool. Thank you for that. Is there anything about that before we move on? Okay. Okay, we are in the in the last 30 minutes of our meeting. And I want to invite you to get your towel. Get your towel. <coughs> We're gonna be doing, this is called in Rage Club, this is called uh, towel work or rage, towel, towel rage. And the, the purpose of this experiment is for feeling your, your lower level intensity feelings and to let it build up little by little, little by little, little by little. Um, so it, this like, uh, allows you to like go from zero to 10% in a way that it's not jumping out to like, like really high percentage or in a way that yeah, this like allows you to like feel those feelings. And I, I do this with my kids around. So Janelle, do your, your children, do they know that you're gonna be doing this work? Okay. Okay. And, and we're gonna be doing a lot of sound right now. So it's okay if the children are making sound too in the space. Okay, so I'm going to invite you to hold your towel up in front of you like this with your hands touching like this. Both of your hands touching. Great. Okay, put it in front of you so I can see it. And this is towel rage. And you're going to feel like the friction that is happening between one hand and the other right here. Even without doing so much of a pressure, you start feeling a, a friction and start feeling that your energy of anger coming up. Just like do like a little twist, 
without having to put too much pressure in it. I'm not holding too tight here. I'm just like gently allowing this friction here to to activate that that energy of my anger. <clears throat> and start squishing a little bit harder. We're like at 1%, 2%, 3%. Let it go into your fingers, let it go into your knuckles. Yeah, let that start going to 4%, 5%. Your feeling of anger starts racing and you start sensing how it, the, the, the feelings, the sensation starts traveling to your wrist, to your arm, to your elbow. You feel that energy, the pressure there. Let it go to 6%, 7%, 8%. Let it go into your elbows. Put a little bit more pressure. Let that go deeper. And Make sure that you're going together with your anger, with your energy of anger. Your breathing is gonna start changing and, and it's gonna start becoming more like, like deep breathing and this is your energy. This is your energy of your anger at low level percentage. This very, very tiny movement here that we're doing with our wrist is your level of anger in small percentages. Let it go now to 8%, 9%, 10%. Let it go, travel more towards your shoulders, towards your shoulders, your neck. It's, a, it's tension and it's energy. The tension and the energy feel your body, the warmth of your anger. Let it go to 12%, 13%, 14 14%, 15%. At this point, some sounds are going to start coming. So let the sounds start coming out. Let your throat feel this energy of anger, your chest. Now your chest has your energy of anger. And keep ringing, keep ringing that towel. Like it's a chicken's neck or somebody's neck. <laughs> Remember not, don't hurt yourself and don't hurt anybody else. You just use your, your energy of anger. You start getting some grunts. Start feeling some grunts that are coming out to you. Let this go to your belly, to your legs, to your sh to your root. Let it go to your head, to your legs, and keep raising it 20%. 21%, some sounds are going to start coming out. Your grunts, your... Ah! Let it go into your face, like show me your, your angry face. Mm. And let's come to a pause. Take a deep breath, keep breathing deeply. This is your energy of anger circulating in your body. That was about three minutes of working with your with your towel. And feel the difference in your breathing, how your breathing change, how your energy circulating in your body is shifting. Janelle, can you are you are you feeling the, the shift in your in your body with this? Um I can feel the circulation and my body's warm. Yes. Yes. I feel more grounded. Mm -hmm. That is your your energy of anger, and you can do that with towel at any 
anytime you want to raise your anger, you can bring your towel and, and start doing this and it starts bringing up those, that small percentage, that low level percentage anger before you wait until it goes all the way up here. You, you attend to it when it's down here, when it's a small percentage, and then you can see what, what is it asking of me? What, what is the, what is the clarity that my anger is bringing? What do I want? We're going to do this again and we're going to let it go a little bit wilder. It's going to go a little bit wilder. I want to see your, your faces. I want to see the, like, let it go in, into your face, like full on, let the, the anger, like be in, in your body, in, in your face, in your, in your mouth, in your eyes, in, in your nose. And do you have, do you, ha do you have any resistance about this? Okay, so bring your towel again. And we're gonna start this time at about 15%. Bring it out in the front of you. And start at 15%, you start wringing the towel, you start a little bit higher this time. And start making, bringing in the sounds. At, let it go to 16, 17, 19, 20. 21, you start making those sounds. Feel the, the anger, the energy inside circulating in your body. Keep going, keep going. A little bit more pressure. Let the pressure really bring that energy to circulate through your body and in your face. Show me your angry face, your mean face. Show me your mean face. Ah. Yeah, come come a little bit closer to the screen and you just show us all your mean face, your really mean face. Ah. It's uncivilized. This energy is uncivilized. Your dangerous your crazy woman crazy man just keep going even if you want to laugh at it like just bring it bring it yes definitely in your mean face to the screen bring it really close so that we can see it we want to all see it and look at somebody in the screen and just pick somebody and make a mean face for them. <laughs> you can do this. You can do this. Come on. <laughs> Just let it go wild. Just let your face go wild. All of these muscles here, they've been sleeping and there's so much red stuck in there. Just like let them be alive and move. Let them move and give them freedom. <sighs> Go, Janelle. That's it. Okay, let's come to a pause. Janelle, you, you still like gotta like work more those muscles and like, like really like make a mean face, really like mean like. Do you guys have any any feedback for Janelle? Any possibilities for Janelle? I started, I noticed I was with my numbness. I couldn't feel my face either. And it started with, I would wiggle my nose. I, I would just start noticing that I could move my nose. Try that, that Janelle. 
Yeah, and it's very common that that you're gonna want to smile, or it's gonna be, it's gonna be really funny or something. Uh, uh, up for me, when I started laughing and realizing in a, a, a previous call, I think that was Melissa that mentioned sometimes when she's mad, she laughs. Maybe it was somebody else. I shouldn't just assume it was her, but um, and I do this as well. Sometimes when I get so angry and mm -hmm. I'm trying to express the way I feel and it's being misinterpreted or it's being misunderstood and 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 then I think it's associated with my numbness bar. Like I just come, I think, to this realization that the laughing is numb is when I'm numbing. Mm -hmm. Um and when I was trying to focus on like being more present, it was again that feeling of numbness, of not feeling anything and being connected again. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. Welcome. Hey, yeah, in my, in my discovery, I discovered that I also laugh, like I have the strategy of laughing because it, if I'm too, if I'm too angry, like I'm going to be dangerous and I'm going to be attacked. And uh, so I, I de developed the strategy to laugh so that I wouldn't be perceived as dangerous. So that I will be perceived as a friend, as a, as a nice person and I'm on your team. So yeah, that there was so much of that that I've been working on and it's amazing how, how much like even even in the little steps that you that we take that you're taking here is like a lot of reclaiming like i, I feel joy because it, i see that, that there is reclaiming of, of that yeah. reclaiming of your well even in those times where i did laugh and it it was not appropriate to laugh and i asked myself why do i do that am i actually crazy because mm -hmm. i have been that's something that happens when i laugh and makes me feel um sad is that i'm i'm accused that it's not appropriate or it's craziness and it's weird and i don't know why i do it but it's uncontrollable yeah it's like an uncontrollable laugh when i'm in such an angry situation uh angry or sad yeah yeah Yeah. Stephanie, do you have something for Janelle? Um, like a possibility? Yeah, for her, her mean face and these yeah. days. Um, yeah, for me, for me, I, I, the first place I often feel it is my jaw, like the clench of my teeth. And I wonder maybe, um, yeah, recognizing maybe just observing what your teeth are doing and, and if there is no tension if there is no nothing there maybe yeah like putting your like my teeth are often clenched together so yeah this could be a possibility to clench your jaw together and like a, an angry dog or someone and show those teeth yeah show the teeth yeah no, I don't. I don't clench so much my teeth, but I do clench my jaw. Like, uh, mm -hmm. that I feel scared of like clenching my teeth and that they might break or something. Okay, I I propose we do this one one more time, and this time we're gonna go to higher percentage. We're gonna go as high as you can, and uh, as loud as you can. Uh, yeah, like as as high as you can and as, as intense as you can. And if you need to, you can bring another, like another towel. You can have another towel and bite into it. Oh. Mm -hmm. So you can like scream into the towel while you do this. Okay. And is everybody okay to go an extra 10 minutes after the call? Like, 
it's uh, yeah like an extra 10 minutes because we started a little bit late i'll probably i'll have to hop off that too because my family's waiting for me okay thank you janelle okay all righty so again like bring your towel to the front uh yeah if you have to yeah you can put the the muffler i call it muffler in your mouth mm. and hold on this and start bringing yourself little by little 15 percent 20 percent let it, sound start coming out at this time let it go ah! Let yourself go higher, higher, 25%, 30%. Go angry for no reason. Go crazy. Feel your anger going through your body, through your feeling. And go with your mean face, show your mean face to the team. Keep it spreading all your body, all your body is doing the rage, not just your hands. Go all your body, your hands, your face. Your legs are engaged in this. Keep going with all of your body. Yes! Yes! Yes, yes. And come to a pause. Keep breathing through your nose, keep your mouth, lips shut, and let the, the energy circulate again to your body. This is your anger, this is your clarity, your energy, this is your life force. This is gonna awake your warrior. This awakens your warrior, your earth guardian, your protector. And through this work, your other feelings are gonna come alive too. You're gonna experience more aliveness in your life. Because your feelings now have something to stand up for. Somebody that is gonna stand up for them. You're standing up for your feelings. You're taking a stand for your feelings. And for a life that is full of feelings, full of aliveness, where you're not being repressed and in a constant battle with yourself. This is your life force. With this feeling of anger comes your clarity, your ability to say yes and to say no for saying what you want, for saying what you don't want, to take a stand for your, your, the boundary of your being. Now you have this tool that you can continue working on and developing and practicing and showing to others. You can show these to others and show them what you have learned here so they also can step into their power, step into their authority, into their life, a life for full on, where they're living and not just merely surviving. S 
Does anybody have anything they want to share or any questions? Sierra. Mm. What's coming up for me is just like showing, sharing this with other people. Um, I was just curious about like, or like the thoughts that were coming. I was like, would I show this to somebody else? This video, uh, what is the resistance to doing that? Does, yeah, does anyone else have resistance if I um, share this video? Will this video be public? Uh, we can talk about it af after decided as a group. I I'm a yes to being published and to be shared. Mm. How about, does anybody here have a resistance about sharing this video publicly? No, I don't have any resistance. Great. Okay. All right, so we're in the last three minutes before the official closing time. I'm going to be staying for a, like a le some like 10 minutes afterwards for closing up. Uh, Janelle, if you have to go, this, that's great too. And any anything that you want to share or anybody wants to share before the official closing time. share again that um, just being new to all of this and not knowing what to expect and maybe having hesitation even um, I'm not really surprised like how much I am learning about my feelings and what they're telling me like it's surprising me when I'm actually coming to conclusions and Realizing things that maybe I've been asking for years now, years. Can, could you could you share a few of those? Um, well, just the just the the idea that um, feeling angry in general is crazy and it's not okay to express it. Um, but always knowing that, um, like how good it feels to express your anger and the grounding that comes afterwards after getting things off your chest and um, how it, it, it's like a driving force that helps come to um, realization sometimes. Um, and also, realizing how kind of in the wrong direction society has taken everyone. Yeah. And even I rec in, in starting all of this, I recognize some of the habits that, that, I, that I have in parenting my children that mm -hmm. I should rethink because they're I'm just programming my kids the same way that I was programmed in some senses. Yeah. So, thank you for yeah. being part of um, having this community and allowing me to be here. The opportunity it's definitely going to ripple down. I already see. I already see so much, um, so many things more clearly now, and it's already. I know that it's going to make a huge impact on me and my yeah i want to say something quickly about what you said about the parenting because uh, it's something that i'm facing too that i i also see how i was doing this same programming for my children and uh, one of the benefits of being in this teamwork and of doing the work of expressing your rage is that you can hold more space now you can hold space for other people for that level of rage that you went into today because you went already into it you you automatically know that you can go into those levels of rage and be okay yeah that you're okay and 
and now you can hold that space for your children you can see ch your child going into like high levels of, of rage and you can like be there with them and saying like go go yes you're angry because you didn't get ice cream saying so, yeah then like keep completing keep completing those loops so just, the it, temple tantrum in perspective mm -hmm. it's not something to be ashamed and i know i can remember being ashamed being told that's not acceptable too. And then uh, it's not as as little as a deal as we think it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Janelle. Thank you. I'm going to sign off now if that's okay. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for being here. See you until next time. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Bye. Well, I want to say that I'm grateful that you guys are stepping up to doing this work. And I feel sad because there was another man that was going to be here today with us and he didn't make it. And yeah, I'm, I'm sad that he didn't make it. And uh, I hope. Uh, he can get to see this recording and get to see the the work that we did here. Is there is there anything else before we end before we end our meeting? <clears throat> In this, yeah, when we went into the, the last practices, those last three in a row, yeah, I, I, I felt, and I felt when I went from the jump to, uh, of like that grunting. And when I'm in the grunting, I, I'm, I'm finding myself containing, like feel like I'm trying to keep it where it is. And, and then the only other sound I know is this, loud like when it's there and it's louder and I wonder yeah, do you know what any of like yeah other sounds like for me the the sound is connected to so much in life like this really resonates with me and, and I feel it and I wonder outside of the grunt outside of the scream what are some other sounds in anger that that either of you might know or be familiar with mm -hmm. Yeah, right away. Sierra, were you going to say something? Okay, there is a, an, an experiment that we can do right now to get to the experience that so that you can experience that yourself. And this is an experiment that I that I developed like a few years ago. It's called a Sasquatch call. And it's very fun. Uh, and it's going to need kind of for you to, uh, I guess, yeah. I guess you can do it. You can do it sitting down too. And he, I think it works best when you're standing up. Uh, okay, well, I'll, I'll do it sitting down. We'll do it sitting down right now. You're, all, you're on mute, Sierra. Okay, I'm gonna stand. Yeah, great. Yeah, I feel like stand. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to do a little demonstration of it first and then uh, and then you can you can we can do it together. Uh, but basically you're going to start from the be from the, the very bottom from down here as low as you can bend and you're going to start with the lowest sound that you can make and you're going to use your anger for making this sound so you're going to start with your lowest sound. So it's going to be like oh Oh, something like that and you're gonna start here down and at the same time you're gonna be tapping your body as you go and and you're gonna the, the this experiment is to go from the lowest uh, vibration that you can make to the highest vibration that you can make uh, so you're gonna like go tapping your body like that 
all the way to your shoulders, your face, your hair, your crown, and then you, your, I can't pull my arms up, but like you like put your arms up like that. And when you're up here, it's gonna be a shift from the lowest vibration to the highest vibration. So it's gonna be something like this. Something like that. And at the end there, it sounded like more like fear. And I think there was somebody passing by and I felt fear about that. But I'm gonna go again with 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 anger. So I'm gonna go again, bend down, and you're gonna start tapping. Oh! And you can use your your muffler if you want. You can put it in your in your mouth if you, if you're not in a place where you can make a big sound. But uh, uh, were you were you able to hear those sounds? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let let's do it. And this is where the purpose of ex uh, like exploring the different ranges of your of your voice from the lowest to to the highest. And you're gonna feel different shifts inside of your throat. And let's just do it and see how it goes. And Go. Oh. Open, open your mouth, Stephanie. Open your mouth like ah, like that. Keep it open. And try to open it, right? Yeah. And I couldn't see so much. Sierra, were you making the sounds? Okay. All right, let's try that again. Oh. Yes, yes. Do, let's do it one more time. Go. Yes. Is that uh, make sure that is that the highest you can go, Stephanie? Ah. Uh, no, I got in my head about yeah my observations. Okay. Do you want to try it again? Like try to go as high, so the, as low, oh, and as high. Uh huh. One thing I noticed is that <coughs> maybe until about here, the sound is the same. And then, and then from like here, it, it jumps up a bit. And then from here, it feels like it can escalate. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. And that's what, what I got in my head about. But yeah, mm -hmm. I will. Yeah. And, and Sierra, try, try to do it a little bit slower. Take a deep breath before you do it. And then go. And then in one breath, like just like go and, and in one breath, go to the, the highest. All right, let, let's do it one more time. Dad, I just have one more. It's almost done. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> cool. Thank you. Okay. From the lowest to the highest, go. Yes. Yes. Amazing. So my, my invitation is to, to keep practicing to keep practicing that, like find a place in nature and a place where you can do it uh, and try to do it again and, and notice uh, for you, Stephanie, like those gaps, like the, like where is that jump? And yeah, there is like different layers. 
for me like there's like four four different layers that happen here in the throat and in my stomach in shifting to the next vibration and then to the next vibration and then to the next vibration so like for you to notice notice those and and explore those there might be some of them that are easier to access than others something like that and to practice the ones that are, are not so easy to access and see what's happening there like slow it down like maybe you can like practice from like ah, ah. there was a chief there so just like practicing from those different chiefs <clears throat> yeah. uh, and this this is like a very amazing experience because it, it kind of like like activates my whole body and and activates like like the different uh, like all the layers of, of my my being does that does that help Stephen? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, it might, it might also, like, you might also discover new pathways when you go into an EHP with somebody holding space for you, like, in the expressing of, naturally expressing the, the, the stories or or the, the emotions that are there, then the, the different sounds are going to start coming out. <clears throat> cool, thank you. Is there anything else? Mm. Yes. I feel grateful for the space uh, today that was held and the, um, yeah, just like the, the, going outside of that infinity, I guess, because it's like, it felt like it was like, okay, it's minimized to this circle, or it's like, it's us, but, and then I had all of this fear about, like, oh, my family's there doing this, and they're gonna hear me, or, like, it's, like, I'm gonna have to explain how, like, what this is, or, like, I had a lot of fear, and then now I'm outside of the infinity, and even at the end, like, my little brother was mimicking my Ah, so it was, it was good. It was, yeah, very grateful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> thank you today. Thank you for showing up today and for coming into this space and for saying yes and for supporting me and in this in this journey. I'm very grateful. Yeah, and I invite you to, to keep exploring. There is other spaces like this. And to, to me, it's like, like that you can also, you are also in training for holding space for others in the same way of gaining, gaining different tools, gaining different distinctions and, and putting your, your own space together or going to other people's spaces, exploring how it is. There is like everybody holds space in a very unique way. So I'm very curious how, how you hold space and what your space, your space looks like. <clears throat> and keep going. Thank you. I will share the, this recording when when it's published. I'll publish it and share it with, a, with the team. Will you be holding uh, a sequence of these? Mm, I'm not sure yet. Okay. Yeah. But I named this one number one, so there might be a number two. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, you guys have a great day. <clears throat> have an, yeah, and have awesome mm -hmm. uh, day full of magic. Keep noticing your no your numbness bar. Keep noticing other people's numbness bar what's happening with their anger, why, why is there, what's happening here, etc. Keep, keep asking those questions and being in the, in the space with, with your sensors out. And then report back to the team if, if you can. 
Alrighty. Well, bye for now. Okay. Thank you.